done it not only once. I've been shot at a number of times in a number of places around the world, and every time God has miraculously saved my life. This is, this is God's Word. So John, it says not just John talking, it's not just the Holy Ghost yes. talking. God is talking. Eating up the stories that he would tell of his missions and ministry, and it would build my faith. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. God bless you. Welcome today to More Than Conquerors program. We were just having a good time before we even came on to be with you, uh, just rejoicing about all the good stuff there is to talk about. We always have a good time. <laughs> and it's fun. You know, we enjoy it. We're just both trying to cram it in uh, to help you. And uh, in anything that we've got, you know, here we are. We're here to share with you the good things from the Word of God. You know, between the two of us, we've been serving God over a hundred years and in the ministry over a hundred years. And so we've got, Mercy. you know, a plethora of uh, cachet of wonderful things we've learned uh, that are tried and proven, like you've always said about your book table and everything back there. There's no theory. No theory. No theory. Nothing in we think anything. Might work. It has been tried and proven in the fire of, of, you know, testing, you know, through the years that this is what works. And anything we've learned, we want to share with you. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we, it, it was just, just been amazing, um, you know, to look back on our lives and, and see the goodness and the faithfulness and the absolute goodness of God to back his word that he does not fail. He Amen. does not. Never, even in the never, midst never. of human failure, even the, you know, we're, we're learning faith. Faith is a learned behavior. I mean, you have to learn from the Word of God. You have to learn how to walk in the Spirit. You have to learn about how the Holy Ghost teaches you. And you know, wants people to... don't really understand that, Renee. Yeah. Uh, I remember decades ago, some great, great, a great couple yeah. that I had gotten to be friends with in Tulsa because, and they were going to Rama. They had come from I forgot what state they came from. Right. But they came to Rama, and they were they were going to be missionaries, and they wanted to be missionaries in Kenya. Oh, wow. And so uh, they would come visit me from time to time, you know, and pick my brain about stuff. And one day they came to me and they said, Brother Terry, what advice can you give us before we go to Kenya? We're about to go to Kenya. You know, we're going to graduate Raymond. We're going to go to Kenya. Yeah. But what advice can you give us? And I said, well, guys, I said, you must, M-U-S-T, you must learn faith. See, people don't get that. They don't get what you just said. Yeah. And uh, and they say, oh, well, we go to Raymond. We know faith. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> no you must learn That's faith. right. Yeah. And they said, what well, we, we do? We got that. I said, no, you don't. No. I said, you've been taught faith. Right. You know, Raymond's done a good job. Right. But you've got to learn it. Exactly. And I said, here's what, no, pre pre mm. here's what preachers well, don't understand is that God requires, here's God, and he has a requirement yeah. that you learn faith somewhere. Somewhere. Somewhere and sometime you've got to learn it. That's right. I said, right. so my suggestion is, my advice is, you're asking yes. me for advice as an old missionary. My advice is that you learn faith here in America. Exactly. Where it's easy instead of waiting until you Easier. get to Kenya and yeah. learning it in Kenya where you don't know anybody and nobody loves you. That's, and they say, oh, no, we got that. We, we learned that. That's faith. it right there. Yeah, okay. Nobody knows you. Nobody People ask me you. for advice, and then they, don't, then they don't listen. You know how that, yeah. you know how that goes. And or they'll come to you and say, you're an apostle. You know, talk to me. And so I do, and then they don't do it. And I'm, I, I think about what Paul said in First, in Second Corinthians 9, 2. He said, he said, I may not be an apostle to everybody, but I am to you. You right. know, because people would hear him preach and listen to him, and then didn't listen to him. Right. But he said, you are, I am an apostle to you. You need to listen. And so they they graduated and went to Kenya, and they came back after about a year all beat up. Yeah, 
And they came to me and they said, Brother Terry, you were so right. We had no idea what you were talking about. We thought we knew faith. We didn't know faith. We we had to learn it in Kenya. They said, we learned it, but we learned it the hard way. Yeah. And we've come home beat up, but we did learn it. I said, well, thank God you learned it because you, you, cause the requirement is from heaven. You got to learn it somewhere. That's the truth. Better to learn it early and better to right. learn it whenever you're around people that love you. Right. <laughs> you know, better to learn it where there's, where there's toilet paper and McDonald's, yeah. <laughs> you know, rather than learn it where there's snakes, and church. And, you know, and church, yeah, yeah, pastors, leaders, but there is, I didn't prayer need to butt in people. there, but what you were saying is so true. You must learn. You must learn. You must learn. That's th right. This is a learning book. Yeah. And God wants you to learn it. Right. So you can go do it. Right. But you can't go do it when you haven't learned it. You exactly. can go do at it. You can go try to do it. You can go right. attempt to do it. A lot of good people, a lot of wonderful people go try to do. It's kind of right. like Wayne Myers said to me when I was just a young, young missionary in Mexico. He said, son, I really believe you're called here. And he said, so many people I see come to Mexico mm -hmm. with the burden for missions. This is so important. Listen to this. They come with the burden. Their heart's right. right. They, they're, right. they hurt for Mexico or they hurt for Africa or they hurt for India. They hurt. Right. They, 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 they're, they have the burden. Right. He said, but they don't have the call. Right. And he said, so they come with the burden, but the right. burden won't sustain you. Right. And he said, so they go home defeated and beat up, mm -hmm. you know, but he said, if you come with the call, then you're called of God, you're anointed of God, you're appointed of God, right. and you'll still have trials and tests and tribulations and fights, but sure. but you'll win. Sure. And you know, and so uh, he said, he said, but you, he told me that when I first got to Mexico, he said, you, I really believe you're called, and I believe God sent you here, and I believe God's going to do something with you. Right. And he gave me a little offering of seventeen dollars, <laughs> and I've told him over all these fifty six years later, you've been with me when I've told him many yeah. times. I said, W W Wayne William Wayne Myers. I said W. In fact, he's going to be a hundred and hundred and two. He just turned a hundred and two in August. August. And uh, and I said uh, I said you know that was the best seventeen dollar investment you ever made in your life because yeah. he told me I believe God's going to do something with you I believe you're going to do something yeah. and and here we are fifty six years later and God sent us all over the world God used us to raise the dead and, right. and cleanse the leper and, yeah. and open blind eyes and unstop yes. deaf ears and cripples Hallelujah. walk and devils cast out and most important the greatest miracle people saved yes. and then filled with the Holy Ghost and delivered Thank from God. demons Thank and, and God. that prophecy He gave me along with those seventeen dollars was I believe God's going to use you because he saw the call. He right. saw the anointing. He saw the appointment. Right. And so so you must learn faith. You must learn it somewhere. Yeah. And it is, as you're saying, too, uh, it is better to learn it in a progressive way. Sure. Than, so God than gives being, you pastors and churches. Yeah, you know, than being just, you know, parachuted into a jungle. How, how many yeah. people have we heard from Corpus Christi, Texas, since you married me, since Dean's been gone now twelve years, and since and then you pastored another two years after he after he went to heaven, so mm -hmm. y'all pastored thirty eight years right. in Corpus Christi at that great church started out being called Rhema Fellowship and then right. changed it to Heritage of Faith, 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 Faith Heritage. Faith I'm sorry, Heritage. and uh, and and then how many people have we heard since then, right, in these ten years, come and say? Because you and Pastor Dean taught us, because you and right. Pastor Dean taught, because you had Brother Terry in and he taught us, because you had Jerry Savelle in and he taught us, because you had Ed right. Frank in and he taught us, because you had Charles Capps in. Just countless he people. Uh, in church, yeah. we learned it in church because you taught us. You know, for 55 years, I have determined never to ask a man for a place to preach. That's right. And never make my needs known to anybody. I think Dean That's and Renee right. learned that when they right. started out. Right. Jackie and I right. learned that when we started out. We will not make our needs known to people. We're not That's beggars. Right. We're believers. And so even though we believe God for partners, we ask God for partners, uh, we've never begged for partners. We've never right. asked people for partners. We we set our faith for partners. We believe God for partners. We've That's asked right. God to, to move on people's hearts to partner That's with us. Right. And we love our partners and we pray for them every day and appreciate everyone that That's does partner right. with us. But at Christmas time or anytime I'm helping orphans or anytime yeah. I'm helping pastors, sometimes gypsy pastors or different pastors that are in need, uh, I don't mind asking because we're not asking for us. We're not asking for our needs. We're saying that these kiddos need help or these pastors need help. And here we are Amen. at Christmas. And, uh, you know, as you know, at Christmas time, Jackie Mize International Children's Foundation, we make a big push for helping orphans around the world. And in the last few years, Renee, we've been
been able to buy tractors. Yes. Uh, so orphanages could could plant uh, their own crops. And we Plows just got a good they, report they for them plant too. And and harvest. Uh, we've dug water well after water well. I love digging water That's wells. That's right. Usually we can dig a water well pretty well around the world for each, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of four to six thousand dollars, depending on the country. And I love digging water wells because it's a life. They don't have fresh water. They don't have clean water. Oh, that's right. And so when we dig them a water well, it's a life. The whole village gets a life. And we usually put it at a church, so they have to come to the church to get to get the life and, and see what Jesus does. But anyway, we do want you to partner with us for missions. We do want you to partner with us for JMICF. Right. We do want you to partner with us for uh, kids having Christmas. And so Amen. we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for what you do. And uh, we're excited about what Jesus is doing. And this, this last year, uh, even in the war in Ukraine, we were able yeah. to buy two different vehicles for yes. people. Uh, just just every time we get a chance to buy something for somebody or we get a hold of some of your money, we send it somewhere else. And uh, well, so and to all also, of us together partner to get this thing done, get the job done around the world. I'm sorry. We also, we, we helped so many women and children. Oh, absolutely. Uh, with everything that they needed. We We've did, gotten so many refugees yes, out of Ukraine. Yes, yes, So we're always looking for places to be a blessing. That's right. So I'm looking for the time where I can just fly around the world and give $5 million away. <laughs> we That's love you. Right. God bless you. You're more than conquerors. So you and Dean did the job, right? And you brought in ministers. You you were smart enough as pastors to to know that there's a fivefold ministry. Exactly. And and, and you know the fivefold ministry, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Ephesians uh, four. It's not just yeah. And Jesus did that. Jesus Himself yes. said He said in the church, it wasn't just a whim of a preacher somewhere. Jesus Himself thought it was necessary to sit in the church. That's the, amazing. The office of the apostle, the, the office, mind of God. Yeah, the, the, the the office of the prophet, the office of the of the of the pastor, the evangelist, yeah. and so on. And so, uh, pastors realize that that the, fi the 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 ministry gifts make up the whole meal. Right. Some is dairy, some is meat, some is bread. <laughs> you know, some is vegetables. Yeah. Uh, and and, and y'all were smart enough to know, right. and, and most pastors are, but many aren't. I preach for pastors; they just don't get it. That that you can't just raise a congregation or a family or kids right. on just green beans. Right. Nothing wrong with green beans. You need them. Nothing wrong with asparagus and spinach and salad. You need it, but you can't just raise on that. You got to right. have the dairy and you got to have the bread and you right. got to have the meat. You know, and, and to make a whole balanced meal, you know. And so y'all did that. When you'd bring in Jerry Sibel, you'd bring in me, Terry Miles, you'd bring in Charles Kept, you'd bring in Ed yes. Frame, you'd bring in all these wonderful speakers that y'all yeah. brought in over the years. Right. And then y'all yourselves were the office of the pastor. Right. So you didn't have to bring in pastors. You did, but you didn't have to because y'all fulfilled that that right. office. But then you'd bring in those other offices. And, you know, anytime, you know, Jackie and I moved to Corpus uh, to be with you guys for like five years. Right. And uh, and so we traveled out of Corpus to the, to the rest of the world. But we went to church at your church and y'all right. were our pastors. And and Dean had such a respect for the ministry as I do. Yes, he did. That yeah. Anytime I was in church, anytime I was in service in, in church, he'd say, uh, Brother Myers, you have something for us today, because he would he would recognize the office right. of the apostle. That's he right. He was very big on recognizing that office, right. and and I always would usually say no, even though I could have got up and preached any time. Right. You know, pastors say, Terry, Brother Terry, you got something? I'll just say no. No, oh, that's Of course true. I do. I mean, I, I can just get up and open my mouth and let her fly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, <laughs> preach out of the overflow. Yeah, right. You know, sure. somebody said, I preach by the letter. I just open my mouth and let her fly. That's right. And, and But but I wouldn't do that because I respected his office as right. pastor. And I think I'm right. not going to interrupt his office as pastor. He walked in here with something to say. He walked in right. here with an assignment from heaven to minister to the people, so I'm not going to get up and usurp his time. So I respected the office of pastor. He respected the office of apostle, and we, we, we would just flow together. Right. Well, you know? when he would travel with you, oh, he, would, he, he would never preach. He overseas. would never preach. He'd say, he, no, you're anointed to do it. You do it. This is your territory. Said, you do that. Preach, that's what you preach tonight. No, you, you you're preach. the one that's called You're, you're called anointed it. to do yeah. this. He was, he, he was so understood all of that. Very few ministers understand uh, anointing appointing 
and calling. Right. That you're anointed for something, you're appointed for something, you're called to something. Right. And very few understand. They just think, well, just anybody can go do it. Right. <laughs> you know, anybody can go do it. Let's just take 10 kids and, and go over here and paint houses and paint fences and help some poor people, and we're missionaries. Well, no. No, you, you've you done a ministry of helps. You've, you've helped some people. Right. You've had an outreach. Yeah. It's what a church should call an outreach, outreach. an evangelical yeah. outreach. But it's not missions. Yeah. You know, and and so missions is not something you delegate <coughs> down me. to say just just any church person can do it. You know, there's an anointing, and a calling, and an appointing. Right, and there there is a sacredness in all of that. You know, the the Lord loves the world, and He wants Absolutely. to use everybody to reach the world. So anything anybody does, you reach here, you know, it's, it'd be like the, you know, this whole area here, this is the world. Well, if I just step next door and help my neighbor, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm that's mm-hmm. that's the first thing, I, you know me, I mean, mm-hmm. I'll go in there and I'll say to people, uh, what do you need? How can I help? Right. Well, we're there to help. We're right there. Right. Or if we go to church and the pastor's taken up an offering to send to a missionary, right. how can I help? Right. You know, everything that we're doing to reach and you know to the old song we used to sing in church, oh, way, way back, early 60s, maybe late 50s, oh, to be his hand extended, oh, his reaching hand out extended. to the oppressed. Didn't the Gaithers you know? write that? Didn't Bill or Gloria Gaither write that? I think so. I'm not sure oh, who wrote that. Yeah, yeah. But it says, uh, let you know, we want to, we are close to the Lord mm-hmm. and we serve God because when we when we go out to represent him, we want to be able to reach with the love, the right, power, right. the giving, the miracles. Yeah. All of his hand extended to the world. And hence, that's why faith has to be a learned behavior. Faith has to be very progressive. You always have to be going like the Bible teaches yes. from faith to faith, yes, yes, yes. from glory to glory. Yes. You know, the path of the righteous grows brighter yes. and brighter. Yes. and brighter and brighter. You're learning faith. You're Absolutely. renewing your mind to faith. You understand, though, how, how important it is for ministers even, not just the yeah, church right, people, but for right. ministers to understand appointments, anointings, callings. and calling. It's, yeah. it's, it's like uh, we were preaching, uh, uh, oh, right when COVID first started, we preached uh-huh. in several churches in California when Gavin Newsom shut the thing down. And uh, you remember Art, Art Aragon said to us after we preached there, right. uh, he wrote us a letter and he said, you left such an apostolic anointing in the right. church. It changed our exactly. church. You must come back. Yes. Because he recognized that ap- that apostles ministry, that apostolic right. anointing. You remember yeah. Mark Barkley sat with me at, 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 at lunch one day and he said, Terry, he said, you're an apostle of God. And he said, I need you. Now, listen to what Mark Barker said. He yeah. said, I need you in my pulpit twice a year. Yeah. He said, I want you to minister to my people twice a year for that apostolic anointing. He said, yeah. you, you commit to me to be there twice a year. And I said, well, I, I, I can do that. I'm happy to do it. But he recognized that anointing. Right. Now, he's a great preacher. He's a right. prophet. Exactly. So you, but but he recognized the, the apostolic ministry. Exactly. The apostolic ministry. And so we we need to recognize the pastor has this this great anointing yes. that not just anybody can do. You know, I've said for, Boy, I've said for many truth. years, you know, that's I mean, I mean uh, yeah. you know, an, an evangelist can't just go in to the church and take it over and be the pastor. Yeah. He's, he's not a pastor. Right. I mean, he'd, he'd, he'd kill the people. He'd wear the people out. <laughs> now, the apostle can go pastor for right. a while. Right. The apostle Paul preached, uh, uh, was a pastor for three years. And Brother Osteen always taught it like this. He said, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. And he said, the apostle is the only one of all five of them. He's the only one that can touch the other four. And he said, so therefore the apostle can do the other four for a while. That's right. But not nobody else. The others Seems can't do to that. Be very you know, true. The teacher trying to step in and, and, and be the apostle can't do it. Try to step in and be the pastor can't do it. Try to step right. in. And so there's a recognition of the callings, the appointings, and the anointings that'll just take you so much further. Right. That's why Brother Osteen exceeded so tremendously as a pastor. I told Brother Osteen decades ago. I said, Brother John, I said, you all your life wanted to be a missionary, and you were a great one. You'd go to Mexico and do crusades. Oh, that's you'd right. go to the Philippines and do crusades. That's right. You'd go to India and do crusades. Philippines, he loved that. India, he loved that. Mexico. I said, yeah. And I said, but then God wouldn't let you. He, he put you pastor right. of Lakewood. And I said, you have reached more people in missions yes. 
from Lakewood Church in Houston That's as right, a pastor the missions conference every than year. you ever would have reached as a one-on-one, one-person missionary. Right. Because you got in your calling, you got in your anointing, and he excelled at that. He really did. So he could actually reach the world exactly from, as a pastor more right. than he could reach the world as a missionary because that was his anointing and calling. And it was tremendous, you know. Oh, oh. I mean, it was un, un, one of a kind, unparalleled, unparalleled, one of a kind, and and it would be teaching the church. I mean, he did it in every way, and and I want to, you know, remind and everybody. Raw and T.L. Osborne, those guys had their own. Oh yeah, anointings. I mean, one time I've told this story before how Lester fussed at T.L. One time we were together, and he said, huh, "T.L., what are you going to do with all those people you get saved in those crusades?" And T.L. said, and he blew out the top of his mouth when he didn't like something. He said. <laughs> What do you mean, what am I going to do with them? And, and what are you going to do with them? And Lester said, well, I'm not going to do anything with them. You're the one that went the over visual. there and had a crusade and got them saved. Yeah. And he said, what are you going to do with them? And, and T.L. said, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything with them. He said, you, you, uh, 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 you, uh, pastors and teachers right. ought to follow us. Evangelists, apostles apostles and evangelists, evangelists around. around. We'll give you a ready-made crowd. We'll give you a ready-made church Everywhere. because that's not our job. Our job is not to stay there and teach them. Right. Our job is to get them saved right. and turn them over to a pastor, turn exactly. them over to a teacher. So if the pastor and teacher had followed the apostle and the evangelists around, <laughs> they'd have ready-made churches because, see, those two men understood anointing yeah. and calling. No, and, that's that's and, wonderful and, and, and administration. And, and that, I wish the church today understood exactly. that. No, that's wonderful administration. The way heaven... Heaven does everything with such a sacredness and a dignity and nobility, where everybody gets to be who they are. Exactly. Well, and a and lot they of don't have, have that, to have that mimic burden. someone else. People have that burden, and they'll just leave the state or leave yeah. Bible school and go right. to some foreign country, and and they'll try to get missionary support. And you can support them, but yet it's not going to produce right. what it would produce right. if they were called to do that. If it wasn't just the burden, it was right. the call. So you can take two people; they can leave. They can leave uh, America and go to a foreign country and one of them is called as an as an apostle or exactly. you know and one of them just right. simply went because they've got the they're a good christian they love god right. and they've got the burden well you can send them both the same money but this guy's going to far out exceed this guy because this guy's anointed to do it right so he can do more with less money exactly he can accomplish well, that's more with less effort that's the truth. Because he's anointed to do it. Right. And it's just like a pastor. I mean, you try to send some uh, uh, evangelist or, or, or teacher or, or prophet in. To, you know, Brother Hagin always said a prophet can't pastor. Right. You know, now a lot of prophets do and try to do it. But Brother Hagin always said a, a true prophet of God can't be a pastor. And right. so a lot of guys have tried that. Right. And their churches just flounder. I mean, I know several pa- that are friends of mine that are, are prophets of God. And yet they pastor a church and, and they do great out on the road as a prophet, but their church just kind of never grows. It just kind of flounders around. It's just simply because that's not the calling or the anointing. So we need to recognize those anointings, recognize those callings, recognize those appointments, Mm -hmm. and it'd work better. (laughs) Well, it's true. Faith, because with every level, every calling, every gifting, there has to be a, a measure of faith growth. Oh, absolutely. That individual person has to take the measure that they were given and they have to grow their faith to the place where they're going to have to match it up with what they're calling Absolutely. or they gift it. Ephesians 3, th- where Paul is praying here for the church at Ephesus, he said that you may have the power to be strong, apprehend and grasp with all the saints. That means with everybody, that ability, he said, um, and and he said, be able to devote themselves and experience and experience that love. What is the breadth, the length, the height and depth of it? He said that you may really come to know practically know. through experience for yourselves the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge. Yes. In other words, you can be taught faith in a church. You can be taught faith in a Sunday school, a Bible college. But you're going to have to, as it says, not just by mere knowledge. He said without experience that you, that you may actually come to know it right. from doing it. You know, in the great book, Hudson Taylor, about Hudson Taylor that I have immersed myself in for the last several years. I've probably read that book now as last year about 14 times. I read it every January. And uh, and it was so impactful in that when in the 1850s, when Hudson Taylor knew he was going to have to go to China and how how 
frontier mind, you know, it was primitive. very primitive. Uh, you were going to, and um, it said a million Chinese a year were dying. dying. And he was going to have to go there. He went and moved to a very impoverished part of England, mm -hmm. Lon London. Mm -hmm. right. And he went and, and got a little tiny room he rented to from practice. LA to practice deprivation. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> to pra and he lived on, he said he, he lived on apples and oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. and he said he would. He the room just had he a table. Himself. The room just had a table, a chair, and a small bed and a fireplace. That's mm -hmm. all it had mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And he said he gave the rest of his money to the poor when he went out on Sunday nights. He said I even deplete, deprived myself. He said I would go to ch instead of going to church Sunday morning and Sunday night. He said I went Sunday morning and in Sunday nights I went into the poorest parts of town and gave my money to the poor mm -hmm. as I was preaching and would come back to my room and eat the leftover oatmeal that I had from right. the morning. And there there were things like that. I, I remember a woman telling me we're she not felt admonishing that. It's yeah. just we were were applauding what he did. Exactly. Uh, in the knowledge that he had. He said he knew he would have to live in very straightened circumstances in China. And mm -hmm. it was a preparation to discipline himself. We've just got a little time. I want to tell you we this. Always have a, just yeah, a, little time. A, a young woman felt she was called to the inner city of a very large city here in America. And the and the ghettos of that city were horrific. The poverty was through the roof. And um, disease, gangs, sure, all those kinds sure. of things. Evil. And uh, her pastor told her, if you really feel called, and she said, I want to go there, and I think it will help me prepare to go to a, to Africa, is where she wanted to go as a missionary. Mm -hmm. And the pastor said, go to this part of town and go live there for three months mm -hmm. and, and prepare yourself to go to that part of the world right. is if you can go and make it there. She ended up realizing she was called to the ghettos and not to Africa <laughs> yeah. because she ended up living there and had such a soul winning effect on the people sure. in that area. So we want to tell you faith is a learned behavior. Faith is a place where you look, grow personally in. And that's between you and the Lord and from the word of God. Somewhere. You have to learn it somewhere. <laughs> so learn it now. So later. learn it now before the trial or test and the big needs mm -hmm. come in life. Well, our time has gone again, again, again for today. And we want to just encourage you. We're going to, we have an, a, a new CD cover out and everything that goes with it on the basics of faith. And we want you to learn the basics of faith. And we'll put that up on the screen for you. And you can get that from us and help you put yourself through Bible school now, here, right where you are. Well, in the meantime, we're going to remind you that one more time, you are more, more than, than conquerors. Bye-bye, y'all. See you next time. He just kept telling me that he was going to kill me, and I kept telling him that he was not. I said, God, if he pulls the trigger, my job is to believe your word, and your job is to do something about the bullet.